Okay, so today I'm going to talk about how I learned that I am a cholesterol hyperabsorber. It's been a long, a long journey, but I'm going to distill it down into a short video so you playing along at home can find out whether foods like eggs, nut butters, avocados um, are good for you or bad for you. So I have um, resorted to taking Zetia as a result of finding out that you know, I was absorbing large amounts of plant sterile and large amounts of cholesterol that I ate. How did I know that? So for starters, I'm going to show my genetic charts up here on the screen. So I have some SNPs, you know, for lack of a better word, mutations in the ABC, G5, ABC, G8 pathways, which are the, um, which control some of the influx and efflux mechanisms um, the body uses to get rid of, of plant sterile. So um, under normal circumstances, the body will preferentially absorb plant sterile to cholesterol, but will then eject and get efflux, get rid of the plant sterile um, through this ABC, G5, ABC, G8 pathway before the sterile enters the bloodstream. And that's why foods like um, oats and, um, and some others are viewed as heart healthy because the idea is, is that you don't really absorb any of the plant sterile. Were the plant sterile to get into your blood, it's bad for your heart health. You know, I've had Tom Dayspring on the podcast and, um, and he's flat out said that he'd rather have, you know, cholesterol in the bloodstream than plant sterile, you know, cholesterol is supposed to be in the bloodstream. Plant sterile is a, a foreign substance that's not supposed to be in the bloodstream. Everything is controlled by genes. So if you have loss of function of the ABC G5 or G8 gene, either one, you will have a broken intestinal cholesterol efflux pump. If the ABC G5 G8 is not effectively effluxing it out to the lumen, it's going to go in your column microns and your HDL and gain systemic exposure. And this is how we, the tests we use to monitor absorption are those plant sterols, phytosterols. And why do we look at them in the blood? Because humans cannot synthesize those. So if I see you got phytosterols in the blood, I know, oh my God, you shouldn't have absorbed these. You are a hyper absorber. So what happens is, is plant sterile ends up in the blood. Now, plant sterile ending up in the blood is really relevant for the absorption of cholesterol. Why? The reason why plant sterile is relevant to whether we absorb cholesterol is because the body makes 80% of the cholesterol found in the body. And because the body is making its own cholesterol, you can't tell where the cholesterol came from. You can't tell whether it's endogenous, whether it was made in the body, whether it's exogenous and dietary from food. You know, we don't absorb a lot of the cholesterol that we eat. And so I had a... Um, I was lucky to have a, a good physician who was running a Boston Heart Diagnostics panel. Um, Boston Heart has a, a test called the Cholesterol Balance Test, which we recommend at Gene Food to our customers who are interested in going down this pathway. And I started seeing um, elevated levels of cetosterol and cholesterol and camposterol. So these are the these are the plant sterols that really sophisticated um, cardiovascular labs um, and 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 top end cardiologists will, will, will look at to see if you're absorbing these, these plant materials. And sure enough, I was, I mean, I had very, I had several cases where my, um, my absorption was, uh, was, was really, really high in terms of, and I'm going to, as you're watching, I'm going to put here on the screen, my, some of my, um, some of my past sterile panels, and you can see that that the, the that the testosterone in particular is 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 well out of range. So, okay, so that's a clue, right? So it's like, um, you know, it looks like I'm like I'm absorbing a lot of plant sterile. Now, if you if you understand sort of like the law of cholesterol homeostasis, you know that as a general rule, the body keeps these these things balanced. So, so the extent that you're making less cholesterol, you're absorbing more. To the extent that you're absorbing more, you're making less. And a panel like a sterile panel is important because it can show you which pathway is causing you to become, to cause your lipids to be out of whack. So, you know, if you have really high levels of cetosterol, it could mean that you're absorbing a ton of plant sterile and also absorbing a lot of dietary cholesterol. Cause again, that's the same pathway. Or conversely, if you, if your desmosterol is really high, it could mean that you are, that you're, that you're, that you're synthesizing a lot of cholesterol. And there's people that have this hypersynthetic response to eating diets that are high in saturated fat. 
it's like one of the studies that we really like at um at gene food is the Redderstall study, which is a study that was done in Norway, very elegant study. And it looks at 33, they had, I think seven subjects drop out, but they got 33 subjects through this, through this trial where they, where they put people on a very high saturated fat diet. It's like a keto style, Atkins style diet. And then they measured their APOB and their LDLC at the end of this before and after the average increase was 44% in LDLC but some people saw as high as 107% increase. So that's generally something where if you have APOE4 or some of these other um, genetic predispositions toward familial hypercholesterolemia, and you're eating a diet that's really high in saturated fat, it switches on that synthetic pathway. And that will show up in a, I mean, frankly, it'll show up in a genetic and a polygenic, in a, in a well-designed polygenic risk score that's looking for um, predispositions towards making more and synthesizing more cholesterol in a high saturated fat diet, but it'll also show up on a sterile panel, like Boston Heart's cholesterol balance test. If you go on the sterile panel, your dysmolesterol is really high and your lathosterol is really high. These are the molecules that sit at the beginning of the cholesterol synthesis pathway. And if they're off the charts high, it means you're making a ton of cholesterol. So that, that, that is often the, the case where somebody will be, will be put on a statin. So to simplify it, it's, it's kind of like these polar ends of the spectrum. So you have on one end, plant sterile showing absorption and ABC, G5, ABC, G8, G8 genes showing absorption of plant sterile and also cholesterol. And on the other side, you have high synthesis. So I was seeing a situation where I would have really high levels of plant sterile. And, you know, I wasn't wildly dyslipidemic, but my you know, my lipids were out of range. So I'd see, you know, LDL cholesterol north of hundred, north of 110, sometimes hundred creeping into 120, 130. Right. And, and I, and, and, and I, and I backdoored into the, the genetic test. So then when I started gene food and I was working with Aaron and, and Sandeep and some of the scientists at gene food, we were putting together these risk scores for, um, hyperabsorption of cholesterol and sterile. I saw, hmm, okay, so I, I do have these, you know, mutations in some of these pathways. And I, um, so my genetics are corroborating my blood work, right? So I can start at the genetics, I can go to the blood work, both tend to line up. So what I started doing, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the, of the, of the show, is that I started taking Zetia. So why am I taking Zetia? Zetia is a cholesterol absorption blocker and a sterile absorption blocker. It acts at the nemopixie one like protein, which is like this absorption, pa absorption pathway in the body. And for somebody like me, who is hyper absorbing plant sterile, could be that Zetia could be, I mean, speak to your doctor. I'm not a doctor, but speak to your doctor. Could be that Zetia is a better or more Zetia, even as a monotherapy on its own, is a better, is a better drug than maybe a statin for some people right? If you're a hyper absorber. So it's like, if you're worried about going and going on a statin, you talk to your doctor, well, maybe I should have a sterile panel. Maybe I should have a genetic panel run so I can see what's the, what's the, what's the catalyst for this dyslipidemia, right? So, so in my case, I started taking Zeti. I still take it. And, um, you know, if I'm careful about what I eat, you know, I can get pretty well in range just with Zeti. I've seen the same thing in family members, but what I'm also looking at doing is I have L elevated LP little a, I'm going to get to in another show, but I'm also looking at potentially taking a PCSK9 inhibitor, bembidoic acid. Um, you know, I've tried to take a statin, a couple different statins, and I just have terrible side effects. The problem is, is that for people that are out there with a similar situation, you know, you're looking to not only blunt that absorption pathway, you know, you talk to Tom Dayspring, he says, sometimes maybe synthesis creeps up as a result of taking Zetia, because again, it's that same rule of homeostasis where you're blunting absorption. So maybe synthesis ticks up. Because if you just prescribe, say, a statin or bempid, more statin and bempidoic acid, because the statin is stronger, and you inhibit cholesterol synthesis, your body says, uh oh, synthesis is not occurring. The body simply absorbs more cholesterol. Which is why Zetia is usually prescribed alongside a statin. So you can't get somebody in range with a statin, you give them Zetia. Um, for me, again, statin is not an option to blunt synthesis. So I want to have my ApoB and my LDLC really low. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to 
right now I'm looking at actually changing insurance providers because I've had benbidoic acid and some of these drugs, you know, coverage denied. Um, but what I'm looking at right now doing is I'm taking some bergamot, you know, I mean, you can roll your eyes if you want, but I'm, but it's like, you know, I'm doing it in recognition of, of the fact that I want to get ApoB as low as I can. I've identified this hyperabsorption issue, right? But I also want to be mindful of synthesis and I'm, and I'm, I'm going for the best pharmaceutical option, but those are being denied me right now. So while I'm working on a pharmaceutical option that will be covered by my insurance, I am giving uh, bergamot a shot uh, and just seeing, playing around with that and just seeing whether a nutraceutical can be a temporary salve for putting lipids in range to the extent that Zedia is pushing up my, um, pushing up uh, my synthesis markers. And I have not had dismosterol tested yet while I am on Zedia. So that's a full rundown of how I figured out that I tend to hyperabsorb plant sterile and by extension, cholesterol, um, genetic testing, advanced lipid testing. I went to, you know, you can go and ask Boston Heart Diagnostics, who are the physicians that run Boston Heart Diagnostics in my area? And there, if you live in a city, there will be some, you can go to them and uh, get your sterile panel done. And, you know, I find that it's a, it's a very useful intervention for somebody like me who's sitting at home, who's not a physician, but wants to have a why behind a pharmaceutical and also wants to look for options outside, outside of statin therapy, which um, I am as a policy matter in favor of, but which a lot of people at an individual level have uh, side effect issues with.